I'm delighted to welcome today Ma'am Solomon, a non-agenarian whose mind is as young as it can be. Uh, without any further ado, I hand over the mic to her to hear in her own words about the roses that have bloomed and maybe the few thorns that have pricked in her life's journey. This is an unscripted and free-flowing conversation, ma'am. You are free to speak in English or Hindi or a mixture of both. And let's see where this journey takes us to. There, there is no predictable path. Uh, so, but I would like you to start by introducing yourself briefly and then tell us something about your childhood, when and where were you born and brought up and any memories of those days and those times that are still fresh in your mind. Over to you. I was born in Nanpara, is a very small town. I don't know whether you have heard the name. Yes, yes, I've heard of it, yes. In 1929. Right. Now, let me say about the memory which has affected me is the last sentence. My father spoke to me before his death, one day before his death. I would like to quote his words. He told me, Beta, hum kuchya hai, khuda kuchya hai. Marzi usi ki puri hoti hai, kabhi life mein kam rata mein. And that sentence has kept me you know, molded my personality. When I think that time, I couldn't hear, understand what he was trying to convey to me. But later on, when I grew up, I understood and followed it. So here I am. <laughs> and, and how old were you then, when you heard the sentence from him? I, I had just finished my class five. Oh. That yeah, yes, and uh, were there other siblings or who all were in the family there in Nanpara? And you had your schooling there. Yes, sorry. My brothers, I had two elder brothers, two sisters, and I had one uh, brother. Mm -hmm. He was about four years, okay. but so he died just same month, same year. Papa passed on 11th August, he passed on 30th August. Oh. So only five of us were left. And you had your schooling there in Nanpara only? No, no. In Lalbagh, Lucknow. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So at how that was... time, Lalbagh was the English medium. Hmm. And they used to take from class four above in hostel. So I went to the hostel. And earlier, my mother was, uh, took a house on rent. And then I started my schooling in Lalbagh. So you started in the hostel at that young age of yes. in class four. Oh, great. No, that's a, a fifth, five. Mm -hmm. Class five. Uh, fourth, yes. and fourth and uh, two years I stayed in hostel. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how was the transition from childhood to teenhood to adulthood? in your times and uh, how is it different or is it different from what we are seeing today but first oh, about no. your transition how means can you recall a little bit of that journey there is a lot a lot of difference between yes. those days and now because see, there was no tv nothing so our uh, Recreation was only like uh, meeting your friends, playing with them outdoor. Mm -hmm. And now 
there's hardly any outdoor activity. Children stay in the house. Most of the time is spent on TV, either in front of TV or their phone. So that's a vast experience. Yes. Our duty was only to study and play, and that's all that's all. Okay. A any remembrances from the, from those days? Anything or uh, any friends you may have made or who are still there or maybe you have lost them? But anything, if you if we can recall something about those days. In Lalbagh, I was I told you that from nursery to fifth, hmm. I stayed in Lalbagh. Hmm. In hostel, I was pampered a lot because I was the youngest in borders. So all the senior girls used to pamper me. My sister was with me, but she was in class, higher class. And uh, I had many friends. Of course, they scholars and uh, we had both, so there was no difference. Like we used to play hide and seek and not decide the sort of games. Uh, and from Lalbagh, where did you, after studying in Lalbagh, where did you move to after class five? As you said. After Papa's death, we had to move. My eldest brother was working in Hartui, mm -hmm. so I went to stay with him. My mother and my sister and then. And there was a lot of difference because in Hardoi that class uh, was uh, Hindi medium. But there was one teacher, you know, when I joined, she used to watch me. But I was moving around and taking part in every activity and all like that, laughing with the girls and all. But she felt that I'm not happy. So she called me one day and asked me, what's wrong with you, Dorothy? I feel that you are not well settled here. Is there anything troubling you, anything you are finding difficult, tell me. So I told her that I'm from English medium here, everything is in Hindi or Urdu, and I can't express myself the way I can do it in English. So she said, all right, today before going home, you come and meet me. She must have gone to the preschool and to the teachers and all, and when I went after school, she told me from tomorrow, Dorothy, you will be writing in English and show it to me first, and then you can go and show it to the teachers and they'll correct. So you will keep your English medium and be happy and settled well. That was a great thing which I can never forget that how the teachers took interest. Now the number is so big. So we may not have that kind of closeness, not what there we have. So but you carried you carried forward the legacy of that teacher because from my own personal experience, I know how considerate you have been of the students later on when you joined the teacher's fraternity. So back to Hardoi, sorry for this digression, and let's go back to Hardoi. And uh, so you studied there till when? Yes, I did my tent from there. And then I wanted to work. I didn't want to study it any further because all my sisters and brothers, they were working. So I said, why should I not work? So I went and joined one school. Then I was working, but uh, like I wasn't fit and only class 10 passed. All the rest of my studies I did privately along with the work. 
So I was teaching over there. But as you know, a boy who never used to study and failed very badly. The manager asked me to increase his marks. So I said I won't, because it will be very unfair for those who are working hard and he hasn't worked, let him repeat, then he learn and he'll be all right. He said, no, you have to increase the marks. So I got annoyed, I said, I'm going to leave the school. I can leave the school, but I cannot. So he said, you leave the school, I won't give you certificate, a testimonial that you have a work experience, nobody will keep you. I got very annoyed. I said, you think that you are my God? You're not. And I'll show you and prove it. And I went straight to the employment exchange to get myself registered. And that's how I got a job in one of the office. And I worked in the office, but I felt, you know, after some time, I wanted to work in office. I enjoyed it in the beginning. Then I felt that uh, uh, my life is only with the files and few tunes and one or two heads. So I started feeling uneasy and my both the brothers were very anxious that I should join me teaching. So one day I decided, all right, let me please them. I said, well, I want to do the training. And so immediately when Brother Roof and resignation later, you said you resign and you went to the principal, got me admitted. That's how I started teaching. My first uh, institution which I joined was Literacy House. That's oh. uh, Adult yeah. Literacy yeah. Institution. And so I had field work to do also. And the teach the girls, the institute girls, they were preparing for class here. I used to teach them English maths. And of course, drawing and things, which is my hobby. When did you join Literacy House, ma'am? A little more on the activities of Literacy House. When did, do you remember the year you joined? If you don't remember, it's fine. It doesn't matter. After my training, my first institution was like, and now I okay. don't remember for how okay. long, but I was glad there. And, uh, and uh, the activity was, you know, that we, had girls and we had to prepare them for class eight examination. Those days, class eight it was also uh, board examination. Okay, so those girls were they, these girls were coming from the nearby areas or were they in the hostel? No, no. Yeah, from the villages and okay. like those who were married, but the marriage failed. And like they were destitutes. So we used to take them and educate them, train them, and so that they can learn something. That was a government school scheme, but they gave it to us to prepare. Then we have, like, I had five villages where we started literacy teaching them do hand work, chicken work, we used to pay them and, and on condition that they learn yeah, Hindi. And uh, we had a teacher also for them. And uh, so they had to learn, sign their name and then gradually read or prepare for an examination. That was the activity. <laughs> from where did you do your training, ma'am? In Hardoi or Lucknow? From where did you do your teacher's training? In, in Lucknow, Christian in, College. 
Christian college. Okay, okay. So by that Christian. time you you had you were doing your studies privately, like doing your class twelve examination, and all. that was privately. Yes, private, along okay. with the work. Yes, work along with the work. And the office you were working in that was in Hardoi or Lucknow only. Lucknow. Lucknow. And Lucknow. which office was that? Do you remember? It's just out of curiosity, you know, so many things which we don't really come to know normally. It's, a, it's so... Was, uh, like corporation uh, office. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in education department. Okay. So, okay. And where mm -hmm. was it located? Where was it located in Lucknow at that time? Lucknow is... Uh, I don't know if you remember. Okay. Near, okay. Uh, near G GPO. Near GPO. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, when you were in the literacy house, who was heading that uh, place? Who was? Uh, who was uh, Dr. Fisher. Dr. Fisher was there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you were, and for how many years were you in literacy house now? I was there. Roughly, no, I don't remember the date. No, but no, the, not the date, but roughly how many years? For quite a few years. Okay, okay. And uh, then from Literacy House onwards, so that must have been a real, uh, uh, real uh, experience for you, ma'am. You like uh, you're working in Literacy House and really imparting education to, especially the women and girls and training them into different types of uh, handcrafts. That, that must have been a, a real part, a important part of your journey. Yes. So, and yes, yes, please. Please continue, yes. I left uh, the Tracy house because you know, like uh, when we are working and uh, people start liking your work, there is always little unrest among the staff, I feel. <laughs> so there was a little politics, you know, like I used to book jeep to go to a village, the other person will take the jeep and go off and so that I can miss that uh, meeting like that. So I said that if I'm not free to work, and not able to do give my best, then what is the use of working in such a good institution? So I said, I will not, because I had to change. He was a very good person. And the person who came in his place was not so much interested in like work. So I told him, sir, like the, the way you talk and all, sort of, you know, like he was very, like insulting at times without any rhyme or reason. So I told that I just can't respect you the way I should respect my hair. And I don't like to work under such a person, so I better leave. So I left and joined Meerut okay. school over there. All right. All and right. that too, my appointment was like, I missed the interview because the TC house girls had their practical and I had to be present in the practical. So I wrote to Dr. Fisher, uh, no, not Dr. Um, another mathematical lady, doctor. So I told her, I wrote to her that I'm. I cannot come on such a such date because unfortunately that day is the, the girl's examination. So any other time, if you have any interesting um, vacancy, I would like you to consider my case. Then one of my cousin had uh, trans been transferred to uh, Merit. During holidays, my sister-in-law said, let's go and visit them. So I went to visit. So he said, why don't you go and meet uh, the preschool here, manager? And uh, 
just tell him, tell her. So I went and to tell her. She kept on asking question and talking to me. Then she got up and opened the cupboard and she took out something in her and kept on asking question. I was asking and she sat down and she told me. Then I said, I would like to leave now. But please consider my case in future if you have any vacancies. She said that I have got three vacancies. Now, which can you want? I have already interviewed you. And she gave me, a, she asked me the fare from Lucknow to her merit and all that. And she handed me one envelope and said that I will take all the candidates who came for the interview. So this is your travel fare. And I have already interviewed you. Now I have a headmistress job, office work, and teaching in higher section. I said I prefer teaching. So I joined teaching. Wow. And what was the name of that school, ma'am? Harvard Preston. So, so you started teaching there. And, which, and it was up to which class that the school? Class. Um, but uh, up to class 10th. Okay. Uh, but uh, there was a condition, you know, that uh, the teacher has to pass Hindi examination. Now, I have never uh, sat for any but, Hindi examination. So I had to do class 10th Hindi. But they made me like uh, my duty to super. Uh, supervised the examination, class 10 examination. So I couldn't appear for the examination and be the supervisor also. So one year, two years, yes, I said, now make somebody as supervisor so that I can pass and become permanent because I was temporary. But every year, it was one year, the auditor came and he started talking to me. He studied in Christian college, so when he came to know that I'm from Lucknow, then he came and told me, and he said, now, you cannot become a permanent teacher over here. So I said, then what do you suggest? You suggest something. He said, either you go and join some English medium school, or you appear for class 10. So I said, now three years have gone. They are not giving me a chance. And so I went to the principal afterwards and I said, now see if you are not uh, giving me a chance here, then I'm going to join an English medium school. And by chance, you know, when I was looking for the job, I had applied in um, Simla, when I school. At that time, there was no vacancy. So I applied there again, and I got the letter from there. And then I said, design here, I said, but uh, you know, like it, there was no ill feeling. In yeah. fact, um, the uh, in charge manager told me that if you go, I will not accept your uh, resignation. You go and see the place. If you like it, then you stay on and let me know. I'll, accept your resignation, otherwise you come back and join. So that's all I kept uh, on good grounds, like and with understanding I lived there. And I still work there. There, you know, what happened that uh, the teacher who was uh, taking um, class 12 for the art, uh, had to go on follow an English lady. And uh, so the principal told me, since you are interested and you can sort of uh, suggest the girls and uh, so I'm, I'm not going to keep any outsider now. You supervise the class 12 uh, um, art class also. So I agreed. I started that year we had a play, a play, very interesting play, you never can tell. 
Now okay. don't ask me the writer. I have forgotten the name. Okay, okay, but, okay. <laughs> so we made posters and they sent to all different schools. There the nuns liked the poster very much. Then we had the exhibition and we invited all the schools with the students. So nuns came to see, they liked the exhibition. And by chance, one of my um, neighbors had work in Tara Hall, that is uh, mm -hmm. Catholic mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. So she went to meet the uh, nuns one holiday, and they told her, and she came to know that uh, we are neighbors. So she said that you persuade her to join us. So I told that uh, neighbor of mine, I said she doesn't look nice, that yet that I have no this thing and uh, to join over here. Of course, my health was not very good at that time. Like a sort of the climate or something was not suiting me. So I said, I would like to uh, change, but not here. Because the same the weather, the same and the yeah. situation is same. So she said, all right, you go to Darjeeling. Okay. So I said, well, mother won't agree. But she said, no, I'll ask uh, uh, your mother and uh, I'll uh, see that you join. But you must join uh, uh, nuns because they want you. And uh, so I said, okay. So she, you know, wrote to Mother Ligvina, she was in Darjeeling that time. She came to Lucknow after I joined as a teacher. Mm -hmm. At that time, she was superior over there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I went to join Darjeeling. So that's how I reached to Loreto. <laughs> OK, Which, what was the name of the school where you were teaching in Simla, ma'am? In Simla, I was there. I, I know they remember the name just now. It will come back to me. Okay, I can ask you later on. You can send it to me uh, okay. via WhatsApp. I'll, I'll, I'll get that. And for how many years were you in Simla? I was in Simla for about three, four years. Okay, and you were staying in the hostel there or you were staying? Yes, hostel. 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 Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, it was the... Tara Hall nun who uh, asked you to go to Darjeeling. He wrote, she wrote for yes. the Darjeeling. Yes. yes, yes. Yes. And so you went to Darjeeling then. So the next stop was Darjeeling. Is and, it? Yes. And uh, I don't know if you, you remember Sister David. She yes, was yes. from Darjeeling or something. So she was transferred to Lucknow. Hmm. Hmm. At that time, my mother fell very ill. And so they sent for me from Darjeeling. So when I came to Lucknow, and I went one day to see sister before I left for Darjeeling again, when my mother was a little better. So she said that she don't think um, if you come to Lucknow, you should stay with your mother. So I said, sister, I never thought of it. I haven't met anyone yet. She said, yes, if you are willing to come to Lucknow, I'll speak to Mother Jude. She, was, she had gone out. And so after some time, I got the letter from my, uh, Sister David that uh, I have spoken and Mother Jude wants to take, take you here. Don't leave. Don't try in any other school. You come to Lucknow. So, yeah. after a few days, Mother Jude wrote to Sister Lidvina that uh, I want to take Miss Solman from there. So, you accept her resignation and let her come to join Lucknow. So, that's how I came to Lucknow and stayed on. Okay, so how, for how long were you there in Darjeeling? Darjeeling, two years. Seventy, I... Uh, Joy and uh, 72. Okay. I, that the centenary year, I was there. No, St. Mary's? Uh, sorry, I don't get that. You were, uh, for two years, you were in Darjeeling and then you came to Lucknow, is it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
72. Hmm. In 72, you came to Lucknow. Okay. That and was so, the centenary year, no? Pardon? That was the centenary year. Yes, 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 that was the centenary year, yes, yes, mm -hmm. and so you started your long innings in Loreto, Lucknow, yes, yes, yes. Uh, any incidents of your life that have left a lasting impression, ma'am, good or bad, you have mentioned some as you were talking, but Anything else besides that which stands out and anything else you want to share about Loreto? Because Loreto has been the longest stint of your journey was spent at Loreto. Yes. 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 34 years. 34 years. Right. Right. So 16 years I worked as a, a coordinator. Uh -huh. Yes. That is yes. after it, uh, yes. retirement. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And, and you you eventually uh, left Loreto Lucknow in which year? 2006. 2006. So from 1972 to 2006, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really long journey. And uh, yes, I, I was fortunate to be part, a small part of that journey of yours. But I think for our viewers and listeners, we need to know more about that journey and about any other thing which you would like to share, ma'am? See, when I was working in a literacy house, mm. I uh, told you that we had, uh, I had five villages under me. And uh, we used to, we made a chicken work as medium. Medium means that uh, we uh, tell the uh, ladies, grown-up ladies, that uh, we'll give them chicken work, teach them, and they pay them. And uh, if after some time they had to sign their name. So they used to learn the alphabet and sign their name. And then we uh, like uh, told them to now calculate how many saris you have made at this rate. So like that maths was taught to them. And uh, one day I was going with the work and uh, money to pay uh, the workers after it was rainy season. And we had to cross a bridge. But the drivers only thought that bridge may not be very strong. So he will uh, take the side route, which is shallow. And he moved towards that. But a small boy, you know, about uh, uh, 17, 18 years. And uh, he came in a cycle, on a cycle, and he said, please don't move that side, it's very deep. You're, you, it's very deep, don't move there. But the driver was already there. And now that the jeep started slipping, he said, uh, Madam, if you please jump out somehow. And I saw that it was quite a distance. Now, how to do that? But he said that if you are out of the jeep, I'll be, do something to stop. But the jeep is slipping and I'm not able to control. Please do that. So I had to. Now I had such a lot of money and the call register, my purse with the money, so somehow I got hold of the register and my purse and with that, I had the uh, longest jump or say broadest, broadest jump in my life. I don't know how I managed to stay on the road. And then I started, you know, the sound, located that somewhere the wood is being cut. And in that direction I ran and uh, there were people cutting a tree. So then I told them they quickly uh, put the uh, logs in a, a cart and they somehow saved the tree. So that's wow. the thing you can never forget. <laughs> that is, the way that God is... helped me. And yeah. That boy was not from that village also. When I told the villagers, 
they said well there is not a single boy with vesting there is only one cycle in the whole village and that is that person has gone uh, out so uh, from where that boy came who the boy was because uh, after i reached the ground i never turned back to look at him and uh, just said said thank you and ran at the direction for help so that's a thing you know like uh, you can such and well god help me maybe sent his messenger from where who that boy was the people were the village people were looking for it but some ladies said this is nothing ye allah ka bheja hua fir is ta tha koi sahi baat allah ka bheja fir is ta tha right so that's that one experience of that that yes. was one experience many such experience i had in my hmm. that God saved me. For what I don't know. This time I asked God, "Why are you saving me?" But He had, because we had to have you here today. That's why God saved you. Any, any, any other instant you want to recall, if you want to share anything else, because this, this was really just eye opening for us. Anything else, if you can remember or see, I had. Many such experiences. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. When I was going to Darjeeling those days, there was some disturbance in, and um, what do you call that place? So uh, it, again, it was rainy season. The train was uh, very late, and we reached that. Uh, this uh, late at night now since the train was late it was not on the main platform so i had to sort of uh, jump to come out of the train the, the train is stopped there was a group of uh, uh, border force uh, boys they all quickly got down everybody got down and i was left alone i said my god what i want to do to do there is no pulley at the platform is not there but i had a big trunk which i was carrying for somebody else and none asked me to and bring it so then suddenly you know something happened and those boys came back to search they forgot to search the apartment before leaving so they came so i told them mother please get me a pulley they got a pulley so i got up and you know that pulley when i said you know get me the guest uh, rest room key for the night so he said no you won't get the key you uh, stay in the waiting room I said, "Is that I thought he said it, you that you won't get the key you get." I said, "But that is that place is very dirty." He said, "I get it clean." He got the thing clean, and uh, then he saw that everything was clean, and then came and told me that you go and wash your face and not, and uh, don't talk to anybody. I'm sitting here the door. If you need anything, you just call me. And every now and then he was peeking in to see that. I'm all right, and I was hearing him. Why is he thinking? He is he thinking that if I go to sleep, he'll do something? What is that? He steals something. I was doubting him, but the, in the morning, he like again he went for the sweeper, got the washroom and clean and all. I said he told me you go and wash your face and have breakfast and go. And when I reached, now they took. Now there were the the bearers were all around waiting for me because they be I had informed that I'm coming, so they were waiting for me. The moment I reached, and with that fully, you know, he went to the to call the taxi. He saw that there was a family, and he told them, "Please drop this, madam, first, and then you go to." It. You take her in right in, and 
she told me everything that I have told that it would take you right in, you know, while it's taking so much care of me, I was wondering, and the, the, I saw the one there run to the nun's side, and then one nun came running to see, Dorothy, are you all right? And they said, yes, no, I didn't have, I came to know there was a murder in the restroom. Oh. And, uh, so, and there was a still like some unrest, some, so they were all fearing, you know, that any moment people were killing known or unknown people. Mm -hmm. So, and she came and she told me that oh, we were so worried that you are coming on such a day and there was so much unrest. And I said, not nothing happened, but I came and the taxi came right in. And that is another experience. You know, oh, that yeah. How like a, that Kuli not knowing me or anything took care of me. And I call him the angel of God again. <laughs> yes, yes, that is, you're right. You do, these are the angels of God who have helped you throughout. Uh, Life after retiring from Loreto, what are your hobbies now? You you shared with us something that day, but how, now after retiring from Loreto, not retiring, I would use the word rewiring. Once uh, you left Loreto to tread on another path, uh, something about that. Then you moved to Delhi or uh, you stayed in Lucknow for some time after, after, after Loreto, Lucknow. Yeah, I was in Lucknow. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, the Gita Kuma. Yes, yes, yes. Study yes. hall. Yes. So yes. They, she asked me. So I said, no, I'm not. I don't want to go to the teaching, but but I'll teach that uh, they have like we have Jagrati, you know, mm -hmm. literacy that that Loreto uh, we have Jagrati. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the study all also used to have one uh, group like this. So I joined there to teach the handwork and all. Okay. But I couldn't continue for a long time because my sister got ill and then they wanted me to come to uh, Delhi. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with her. Okay. But then I, now my same hobby, painting, mm -hmm. embroidery, I still make handkerchiefs. Yeah. And, uh, do tidy, so that yes. keeps me busy. Uh, and uh, and how did COVID impact you? Because COVID has become such an uh, important part of all our lives. But uh, but you braced COVID and you you came out of it. That that yes. that, that is important. The whole family. We were, we are five of us. Hmm. Uh, Sunil and his eldest son were admitted in St. Stephen because um, their temperature was not coming down and Sunil is diabetic also. The doctor suggested that if like uh, diabetic cases, you know, they were taking more precautions. So both of them were admitted in the hospital and three of us had fever. Oh. Of course, but we all thank God that we came out of it. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I, you know, I got a, a vaccination mm. and the reaction of the vaccination, I got the rashes in my leg. Oh which is still troubling me. Mm -hmm. So, but, but uh, rashes disappear, but the skin has become very dark. So still oh. I'm taking treatment. Mm -hmm. so but but other, other than that, you are fit and fine and you will remain so fit and fine that <laughs> we are sure of, because we want more uh, embroidered stuff from you, ma'am. We are going to get our bookmarks which you have you which you made for us. I've already so, left it with yes, the sun yes, sun yes, and yes, uh, yes. Neera is going to help to get yes. to give it to us. Uh, right, right, right. Exactly. That is tighting, tighting uh, bookmark. 
yes so so you are you are doing that which, which is wonderful which is wonderful ma'am uh, any uh, we, we can and i am sure i have taken so much of your time but it has been such a pleasure listening to you any words of wisdom for today's youngsters and and the elders also and the adults also see like if you don't think about your troubles and do something you like uh, something constructive i feel you feel very satisfied i was teaching my mates at uh, boys also and uh, the elder one appeared on uh, class 12th examination and he passed with the good marks so like i was in a touch of teaching again but uh, after this illness i have not been able to continue and uh, like and uh, everybody is working from home so like uh, they also need place yes now i'm not uh, teaching anymore but hand work i'm doing yes 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 uh, and i'm sure you'll get back to teaching also because uh, as as we come out of the pandemic slowly i know it will take time what you're saying is right but uh, but to remain connected and to keep on doing and keep on going just changing changing our path of life i think that's and and that's the reason for your such a productive and long life and uh, any regrets any regrets in your life ma'am So no, I don't have any regrets, Sanjay. Okay, okay. Because what I can't get again, I go back that my father's sentence tells me that it's not my will, it's his will, and his will is done. So I take it that way. So That's I don't have any regret, like. Uh, that I, i didn't get this i didn't get that like i try to be friendly and with everybody some may not like it some like it it's all right it's a different nature you have to go with it okay so so thank you very much ma'am thank you very much it has been really so many things i spent so many years working under you working there and didn't come to know of these things so and i think it's very important to record uh, for posterity for others to know how how you were motivated throughout your life and your association with so many uh, good enterprises like literacy house and, uh, and and all your experiences Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and we need your blessings all the while, all the time. Thank you.